Of course, I would never vote Conservative. You could have, you could have well, voted you would, Labour. You, you could have voted you, Labour you, in that constituency. No, I couldn't because that would be helping the SNP to win seats. Well, of I So, George, what is the George Galloway pitch for Batley and Spen? Well, it's for a change. Uh, and I think people who have been ruled by the same people for a very long time are always potentially in the market for change. The feeling here is that Batley and Spen is the left behind part of Kirklees, that uh, other parts of the authority get far more attention. Uh, Huddersfield, as I've said, looks like Paris compared to Batley and Spen. And I use an old saying of mine that it's the squeaky wheel that gets the grease. Mm -hmm. And if you don't squeak, still better roar, uh, then you won't get your fair share. Uh, and there's another odd phenomenon here. I say odd, but actually it surprisingly often happens. Nicola Sturgeon, for example, in Glasgow Southside, although the council leader is representing here, he doesn't look after the people here. He looks after other people. So seems to betray a kind of complacency, arrogance, uh, the, they'll always vote for me kind of thing. Uh, so change is uh, a big part of our pitch. Palestine is a big part of our pitch here. The very first thing I saw when I uh, came into Batley for this campaign was this flag. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. why this uh, cafe is a bit of a favorite of ours. Palestine is hegemonic in uh, at least a quarter of the constituency. And in a by-election, a quarter is a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, so and like. they're outraged by Labour's dramatic switch from the Corbyn era 2019 Labour conference, mm -hmm. everyone waving Palestinian flags and so on, to what is portrayed as a more even-handed approach, but in fact is a tilt uh, towards Netanyahu until yesterday. Uh, and people are outraged about that. What did you make of Starmer's PMQs about Palestine? It was entirely cynical. Uh, it uh, seemed to call for recognition of a non-existent state, as if that will put any potatoes on the plate of the people in Gaza or protect them from the falling missiles. But it wasn't actually even that. Mm -hmm. It was a call to Boris Johnson to call on others to do the same, and th this kind of multilateral approach which has been going nowhere since since Oslo, uh, which I remind you is rather a long time ago. So it, it was entirely cynical. It hasn't done them any good. Uh, the people's mind, amongst those who prioritize this question, I'm not suggesting everyone in the constituency does, I think there's a settled will here that Keir Starmer has to be punished for the turn away from Palestine that is made. We saw the, this incredible, very eye-catching poster. You've got lots of eye-catching posters. And it has you pointing decisively, Starmer out. Yeah. I guess what I'd ask is, I mean, Keir Starmer obviously isn't Prime Minister. And to be honest with you, George, the odds of him becoming Prime Minister are exceptionally low. Yeah. Um, his approval ratings are catastrophic. Labour is very, very badly behind in the polls, despite 150,000 people dying under the Tories' watch in the pandemic. Mm. But, He's not Prime Minister. So it seems odd for someone like yourself, former Labour MP, certainly someone traditionally man of the left, campaigning not against the Conservative Prime Minister, who, as you say, does have a big majority, mm. but against the leader of the opposition, who's nowhere near power. No, we're, we're also fighting the Tories. And as the campaign goes on, we'll have to turn our attention to them because let me break it to you gently, Labour are going to be third in this by-election. Oh, they actually, to say that decisively now, but 100% uh, Labour are coming 100%. third. 100%. I'll eat my hat in Would your you actually presence. eat your hat? I'll eat my hat if they're not third. <laughs> and if Paul Halloran had stood for the heavy woolen mill mm. independence kind of uh, former UKIP outfit, uh, he'd have been fourth. Labour would have been fourth. Uh, so you're going to come, when do you, th you think you're going to come second? 
first or second. Uh, the Labour Party will be third. Uh, so, don't you think we, anything, despite you know Keir Starmer and the terrible failures of the Labour leadership, etc., which we could go into, doesn't a part of you feel a bit sad that you'll end up, despite everything, delivering a seat to the Conservative no, Party? No, we don't concede that at all. Uh, we are in this to win it, and we have a decent chance to win it. Depends mm. on the turnout, differential turnout, and other things. No, it doesn't. Uh, I think if Keir Starmer becomes the first leader of the opposition in political history to lose two of his own seats to the government in mid-term, in three months, yeah. uh, his position will be untenable. Do you think he'd actually go there? Uh, I, I do. I think someone will challenge him. And Who would you uh, like to take over from him? I don't have a view on that. A stalking horse may be uh, what happens. Uh, I can't remember the name. Mayor, uh, who was the stalking horse against Mrs. Thatcher. Oh, uh, uh, Sir and Austin. Sir Anthony Mayor, I yeah, think. Sir Anthony Mayor. Uh, a stalking horse uh, might be uh, required. Are you going to make Andy Burnham Prime Minister, essentially? Well, they'd be doing a lot better with Andy Burnham than they're doing uh, with Keir Starmer. Frankly, they'd be doing a lot better with almost anyone. Uh, with your than, heart, maybe. Than no. they, uh, uh, are with Keir Starmer, so I'm not sad. You ask me why, well, of course, I'm a part of the Labour movement. No one can expel me from that. I joined the Transport and General Workers Union on Christmas Eve of 1973, uh, and I'm still a member uh, of its successor organisation. I'm a part of the Labour movement, and therefore it matters to me uh, that in the teeth of 150,000 deaths and a catastrophic Conservative Prime Minister. Labour is not 20 points ahead as they promised with almost anyone else they would be, but almost 20 points behind. I mean, no one can dispute that Labour are in a catastrophic situation of their own making, but in terms of, I mean, Boris Johnson wants you to do well, doesn't he? I mean, Boris, if Labour lose the seat, if the Tories win it, partly thanks to your campaign, Boris Johnson, we all know, we saw what he did on the exit poll, he punched the air. He will be a very, very, very happy man. He will be boosted. His chances of winning an even bigger majority in the next election increase. Doesn't that make well, you feel... I don't, if Labour were to cut uh, Johnson's majority from whatever it is to one less, uh, that would make uh, virtually no difference in the British political scene, neither for that matter, by increasing his majority by one. Uh, if I win, on the other hand, it sends a dramatic message to the whole of the Labour movement that Starmer must go. Uh, and that's a precondition for defeating Boris Johnson. Not next time. Nobody can defeat him next time, I don't think. Uh, but the time after that, if Labour is not to be out of office, if the Labour movement is not to be bereft of power and influence in perpetuity, Starmer must go. Uh, so uh, you won't get. So you're trying to save Labour from itself, as you, you see it? You, well, you, yeah, I mean, I won't be guilt tripped into. Uh, because I make no real distinction between Keir Starmer and Boris Johnson. Uh, in fact, uh, Boris Johnson um, is an entertainer. Uh, Keir Starmer is a block of wood for me. Uh, uh, so wooden, the birds are nesting in him. I mean, uh, there uh, is a difference there, isn't there, clearly. Uh, I mean, the wor surely, and I'm sure I've heard you say this before, the worst Labour government is always better than whatever the best Labour government is. You campaigned for yeah. Labour under Tony Blair yes, before you were kicked but, out. But, Tony Blair, I mean, Keir Starmer's not as right-wing as Tony Blair is, so how could you well, campaign to be a Labour MP under Blair, Blair but not Starmer? It's Tony Blair without the laughs, without the polish. It's wood without a polish. Uh, not even a coat of varnish. Uh, the, the difference is, uh, in what I said then and hold to, any Labour government is better than any Tory government, mm -hmm. but under Keir Starmer, there never will be a Labour government. So tell me about the reception you're getting here. So a poll's just come out which shows that British Muslim support for Labour has declined. I saw that in the paper, and, yeah. And um, that Keir Starmer's rating amongst British Muslim voters is in, in the red. And it wasn't under Jamie Corbyn, even at the nadir of his popularity. So, I suppose what I'd ask is, I mean, Muslim constituents are a very important part of this constituency, but obviously most people here aren't Muslim. Sure. So, are you getting 
is is your support essentially confined to Muslims who are who are understandably very angry about Labour's positioning on Palestine, on, on Kashmir, for example, uh, as well as on domestic issues, on Islamophobia. Is that where you're basically, that's where you're winning your support? No, this is the key to my optimism, which I see has not yet persuaded you. Uh, because of my Brexit stance, I can walk in every part of this constituency and talk and get a hearing in every part of this constituency. Because I am of a certain age, mm -hmm. of a certain class, not infatuated with some of the issues you're closely associated like with what? yourself. Like what? Spell it out. Well, spell out, I don't want to be offensive. But no, I think know, we should this, be honest about it. I this, think we should be uh, honest. This tendency to, to, uh, to name everyone one step to the right of you as far right. I don't do that. Two steps to the right of you as uh, uh, as virtually a fascist. I don't, I don't do well, that. Perhaps you don't. But I mean, I've been it, beaten it, up by fascists, but I, I don't know. identify, I I identify but a man with a, with a house full of Combat 18 and neo-Nazi memorabilia who beat me up and got sent to prison. Yeah. I think we'd agree that's a fascist. Yeah, yeah. Other people, I don't agree. But I mean, on that, but, that's... No, but it is a tendency, I hope you'll agree, of the intolerant left in quotes to seem as if they hate a substantial section of the English working class. Uh, to How? Uh, Give me an example of that, well, because that's a, it's a striking suggestion, an well, accusation, but what well, does it mean uh, in practical Angela terms? Angela Rayner said on Twitter, not 48 hours ago, that anyone who was hostile to uh, the taking of the knee which for me is a purely tactical, practical question, uh, was essentially a racist. Do you not think people booing English players taking the knee in support of Black Lives Matter is a stridently reactionary move by people who clearly, on issues of race, no, are, I don't. Are not, are not, I, I don't, mean, this, well, you, you know... You're, you're saying to millions of people who think... Millions this, of people wouldn't boo it, English no, players no. are doing well, that. You might be wrong about that. The polling says most many, support taking the knee, let yeah. alone most don't support booing players because they've they're expressing no, that's freedom of expression. Uh, uh, They've been cancelled so. for, said, for kneeling. I, I said so. Uh, less than twenty four hours ago on my on my show, no one should boo anyone for doing something that they, in conscience, want to do. But that's a different thing from creating an environment in which. If you don't do it, you're a racist. This is not logic. You're there just saying people... those English players who were booing football players for taking the knee. Why, why do you think they were booing them? Well, what was going through their heads of the well, fancy booing there, there are a lot of people, uh, and many of them called my show last night, to express their uh, opposition to the organisation mm -hmm. Black Lives Matter or Black Lives Mansions, as they're known in some parts what of the United States. What do you mean Black Lives Mansions? Well, the leaders of BLM in America have miraculously turned up in gated, well, white-only communities B owning large BLM mansions. isn't one organization. It's well, a movement. It's a franchise. It's just, it's, it's, it's a, you know, there are lots of different movements that call themselves Black Lives Matter. Yeah, there is but, no one organization. But the uh, impression that people have is that in taking the knee, you're bowing before a pretty stridently anti-capitalist manifesto and... Uh, that used to be your thing, George. No, uh, what it, is my, it is my thing. You're asking me why people booed. What? One of the reasons they boo is that they don't like the profile of capital B, capital L, capital M. I didn't say that I share those perspectives. Okay. I'm explaining to you why some people boo. Uh, but the tendency to write people off as racists right. is a Labour tendency, is a leftist tendency. Nigel Farage is a fascist. OK, on that, I mean, because we need I want to get we need to go to walk yeah. around and meet people. But I, I am interested in in your and it, this isn't, you know, because we're, we're not here to we're, we're here to, to chat and understand and tease mm. things out. Mm. But I am interested in your, I suppose, your political journey. And I'm, I'm interested in terms of you just just explaining your working out, because I think that's what you know, so for example, on the issue of Nigel Farage, you in the 2014 Scottish referendum said some very strident things about him. You said he was trying to blame Johnny Foreigner mm -hmm. for everything, which does sound like the sorts of things 
you're accusing the left of doing. But I'm not. And I'm... then two years later, you stood on a platform with the man you accused of pointing at Johnny Foreigner to it... campaign alongside him. Exactly as Michael Foote did uh, with uh, someone far more right wing than Nigel Farage. But were uh, you pointing Enoch, your f- Enoch Powell? Were you pointing your finger at, at, no, at Farage would... to call him a, a racist? But but when you you were right when you said that you were right. He blames problems on Johnny Foreigner. I, I, I was also right when I united with people of all political stripes to get Brexit. You almost did so yourself. Well, I'm, fact, I'm, I'm, it, I'm, a, I'm a left your sceptic for Remain. I've no, I've you, no qualms saying you, that whatsoever. You, you wrote one of the best pieces about well, why... I, I coined Bre- the, coin Bre- the word Lexit. I why, abs- why Brexit might I, actually be the right thing and, to and support. I, I, stand, I wish you'd stood by I, I that. I stand, George. I wish I'm, Corbyn had stood by that. I stand by my critique of the EU, though I didn't support leaving. But on that, because you're standing for an election, no, can, can, I, can I ask just quickly, why did you go then? I mean, this isn't to have a go at you. I'm just interested in the working out. Because in 2014, you said, I'll be campaigning to remain in the EU as anyone with any brain cells will be doing. You said, I strongly support the European Union. There are many, many things wrong with it, I agree. But none of them are wrong, would be better by withdrawing from it. And what, what the cha- what's the Greece, change? Uh, well, I made a speech about it, okay. which is there on the uh, internet. Uh, The treatment of Greece, the crushing of the people of Greece, meant that the EU could no longer be supported by someone with views like mine. Uh, That was in 2015, in the summer, Mm -hmm. Uh, if you want to uh, look it up. Okay. Uh, And then when you decide that you're fighting for Brexit, you have to, in a binary referendum, be ready to be on the same side as people with whom you disagree. But why not just do your own just, separate left-wing movement? There was a left-wing movement. There was Lexit was run as a separate campaign. You didn't have to stand on a stage with Nigel Farage, who you said points the finger at Johnny Foreigner you know, for all the well, problems. I, in society. I, I, I wanted to win the referendum and did uh, win you, the referendum. That was you. No, but I mean, I wanted our side to want okay. to, to win the referendum and we did win it. And you were asking me mm-hmm. about my traction in parts of the constituency that are not yeah, Muslim. Sure. But I want to say this. Nigel Farage is not a fascist. Anybody who I calls Farage... A fascist. You didn't, but many on the left do. I think he's a very right-wing politician the, who blames, as you say, problems of society and on Johnny this, Foreigner, uh, this, including Muslims. This, his, this, his this Brexit tendency, Brexit. which is prevalent on the left, whether you are uh, guilty of it or not, I accept you say you're not. Of, bl- of calling everyone to your right, yeah. far right, even fascist, well, yeah, anyway. is, is, yeah. has alienated okay. large sections of the English working yeah, class. Yeah, I get it. Very I get- large. So, okay, the other thing is, I mean, because, and, and I say this because it is relevant because there's a very good chance the Tories are going to win Batley and Spen. And if I was a betting man, I would bet on it. And Labour people privately think the Tories are going to win the seat. I mean, in 2017, you said you could never support any Tory. In 2018, you said you'd sooner poke your eyes out. And then you voted for, Tor- for the Tories in Scotland. You I didn't be- poke your eyes out. No, They're still there. I can I, see I, them. I, I, when, when the facts change, so do my opinions. I don't know about yours. Uh, my opinions... I can never vote for the Tories. I would saw my own legs off. Well, let's uh, make sure that's I will. Uh, captured on, uh, on, on, on tape. But it will well, never happen, but I would do well, it. Well, you would if it was a Tory. You would if it was Macron versus Le Pen. Uh, okay, you weren't campaigning. If there was a fascist... Answer that ulti- point. Oh, and I okay. see you're floundering. In, in Scot- you're floundering. In, I wouldn't vote. If, if, if it was a Conservative... If it was Macron if, versus Le Pen, you'd vote for Macron. Macron is yeah, a Tory. You're, you're right. Okay. So, so I think we've agreed would, in, in the extreme exception of a fascist, and you agree Le Pen's a fascist, that's, that's, that's good to know. Do you think Le Pen's a fascist? A, a former fascist. Uh, interesting, okay. Le Pen is a fascist in my opinion, because I know you said you shouldn't There you go again. Uh, well, but in Scotland, the alternative wasn't fascism. No, uh, it was the Scottish National Party, and I don't support Scottish nationalism, but there's nothing fascist about the Scottish National Party, well, not I, even remotely. Actually, the Scottish National Party was founded by fascists. Okay, do you think the Scottish National... You can't say the left keep calling things fascists which aren't and now call the SNP fascists. I that, didn't call them fascists. I okay. said they were founded by fascists. So you did support... It the, is a fact you support that the cons- they were founded I would by rather fascists. the SNP won than the Conservatives well, I know you would, any time. Because you don't care about the breakup of Britain, but I do. Well, that's not true. My, my, my family 
like most of my family live in Scotland, but or half of well, the day, my mum does. You would you can't say you'd vote for the SNP if you care. I, did, I about didn't say you'd vote for. Britain. I didn't say you'd vote you for the SNP. I said rather I, than a Tory. Oh, of course, I would never vote Conservative. You could have you, you could have well, voted you would, Labour. You, you could have voted you, Labour in that constituency. No, I couldn't because that would be helping the SNP to win seats. Well, uh, I regard the breakup of Britain okay. as an existential political matter. Right. Every bit as important as stopping uh, Le Pen becoming the president of France. Do you think your younger self would have seen you vote Tory and gone, what the hell no, did I end up doing that for? As I say, when facts change, so do my opinions. If the, if the choice is between facilitating the breakup of Britain and thus the destruction of the possibility of the kind of politics on this island that I want to see, then I'll do anything to stop that secessionist, nationalist, separatist uh, victory. And I did. Uh, and it worked. Finally, because we want to get, we need to walk yeah, around. Yeah, I want to yeah. see you in We're action. I want to see you talking to people. Yeah. Donald Trump, you'd agree he's an anti Muslim bigot, wouldn't you? Yeah. But it just seemed a bit ambiguous for a while. You were a bit kind of like, this is a big rebellion, you know, better, better. But you seem to prefer Trump there, to Clinton. There, there, there you go again. I, well, <laughs> As, as I put it at the time, I'm not happy that Donald Trump is the president of the United He's States. He's not anymore, don't But we? I'm very happy that Hillary Clinton isn't. Would you have voted That's for Clinton? The same thing. Would you have voted for Clinton no, over Trump? I wouldn't. Who would you have voted for? Dr. Jill Stein. I, I the Green fully candidate. supported her <laughs> candidature. Uh, uh, I it. only ask that because obviously Trump was the most prominent Islamophobe on earth and obviously lots of Muslims yeah, in this country. But Hillary Clinton didn't just say mean things about Muslims, she murdered them. And Trump actually murdered fewer Muslims than Clinton did. Uh, so he still I, bombed Surrey and used I, I, drones I, in Afghanistan, yeah, but, killed more people in Afghanistan with drones than but, other American but, presidents. But fewer uh, than uh, in total the administrations which preceded uh, him. So no, I don't support Donald Trump. And the tendency to say that if you're against Clinton, you're for Trump, is again displaying the very phenomenon I'm trying to describe to you here. The lack of nuance, the slapdash use of... Uh, lack of nuance. Of, of, I think we'd all agree. Of, of You've of agreed pain. he's an anti-Muslim bigot. So. Uh, for sure. Uh, but uh, he uh, is not alone in that. Joe Biden's administration may very well plunge the world into nuclear war. Uh, and that's worse than ignorant tweets. <laughs> well, we'll see. Let's go in.